Okay, so welcome to the second lecture for the week. We're going to be doing derivatives of functions of many variables, mainly multivariate calculus. So, let um, me get a couple of markers here, a decent one. Okay, I'm back. So, uh, we'll be doing multivariate calculus. So, for those of you that have had calculus three, this should be a pretty easy refresher. Uh, I don't know what the business calculus course is, um, what what it covers. Uh, I don't know if there's any sort of multivariate calculus that you guys do where you do partial derivatives. So I'm really just doing a quick crash course on this, just showing you how to take partial derivatives. And then we'll kind of go through some of the functional forms that you'll see derivatives in, or that you'll have to take derivatives of later on in the course. So, let's get started. So we learned how to take a derivative last time. This time, We're going to have a function, we'll call it z, that is a function of two variables, x and y. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to know how is z changing with an infinitesimal change in x and also with an infinitesimal change in y. This is where the partial derivative comes in. And what we have is this fancy little d, it's like a d, but like kind of curly. We call it del, del z del x is equal to the partial derivative of f, which is a function of two variables with respect to one of the variables contained within that function. All right, if we want the partial derivative of y, or the partial derivative of z with respect to y, This is what we would have. So what we're doing is we're taking the derivative of this function with respect to one of its inputs, because it's going to have multiple inputs here. So we're taking the derivative of that with respect to one of those inputs, but what we're doing is we're holding the other inputs constant. So if we take the partial derivative of z with respect to x, we hold y constant. We want it with respect to y, x is held constant. So if you remember with calculus of functions of one variable, if we were taking a derivative and we had, say, the derivative of 3x squared plus 5, right, remember that 5 is a constant, it's just a number, it's not changing along the x axis. Well, the same thing's actually happening here. If we do it with respect to x, y is considered to be held constant. It's not changing along the x-axis. We're only looking for a change along the x-axis. So really, y is just considered along for the ride. It's just, it's a constant. It may as well be a number. So let's talk about how we can take a derivative of a function of more than one variable. As you've seen the theoretical, like fancy math notation for it, but let's actually put it to use. Let's apply what I just said. So we'll have a function f of x and y being equal to x to the fourth y squared plus 3y cubed 
times x plus 2 times xy. So you're probably looking at it going, holy shit, what the hell did this guy just put me into? Why am I doing this? Why am I taking this class now? Well, fear not for the fate of humanity or for your grade just yet, because this is a lot easier to differentiate than you might think at first. Let's take a look. So, I want the derivative of this sucker with respect to x It is curly d f of x, y divided by the curly d x, del f of x, y del x. And I just go through, anywhere I see an x, I take a derivative. But anywhere I see a y, I just hold that guy constant. All right, so x to the fourth, y squared. This y is basically just, it could be a 3, it could be a 2, it could be a 1. It doesn't matter what it is. So, I take the derivative of x... So I get 4x cubed, but y doesn't change, so y is still just y squared. Alright, 3y cubed x. Well, ignore the y cubed. Think about what's going on just with the x, right? Well, it's x to the first power, right? So the derivative of that would just be 1, right? So I get 3y cubed. Alright, because that x just goes to 1. Alright, 2xy. Well, it's the exact same thing that happens here that we saw here. Alright, this x is just x to the first power. So this is what I get. 4x cubed, y squared, plus 3y cubed, plus 2y. Let's do it with respect to y. Okay, so we go over here. Now we hold x constant, but we let y change. So the derivative of this guy with respect to y, 2x to the fourth times y. As right, so I take that 2, bring it down as a leading coefficient, subtract 1 from the exponent. x stays the same. 2x to the fourth, x to the fourth, x to the fourth. Got the derivative of the function with respect to y. Okay, let's look at what's going on over here. Hey, Osiris. Well, take the derivative of this, just sort of cover up that x for a second, just look at y. All right, well, the derivative of 3y cubed would be 9y squared. x is along for the ride, so it just stays put. Plus 2xy. Well, that just comes down to 2x. Hey, Mr. Osiris. Allow me to make an introduction really quickly. Hey, buddy. Oh, I love you. I love you so much, little man. And I would like to introduce to the world his Lord, Majesty, and Savior, Osiris II. He's an awesome cat. He's one of four that I own. Yeah, you are one of four. He's a really cool cat. I love this guy so much. He's super awesome. He lets me hold him, too, which is strange. A lot of cats get pissed off. They're like, no, put me down. Put me down, asshole. This guy is like, hey, man, let's hang out. Let's do stuff. Yeah. Want to say hi to my class? Hey, class. I am a crazy cat, man. It's okay, buddy. I love you. You're a good boy. What, you want to hang out while I teach some math? Want to, you want to learn some math? Do you? Oh, my dad, I want to learn math. Oh, so much math, dad. Look at all that math. Hey, buddy. Yeah, come on, let's do math. Sorry for the minute-long introduction there. So, the partial of f with respect to x is this. The partial of f with respect to y is this. Oh, Cyrus, what's wrong, bud? You want to go to the bathroom? Well, the bathroom's right there. Feel free, man. 
I really need to learn to close that door. So this is what we would get. Right now, let's think about this in a different example. Let's think about what this guy is, or how we take a derivative of a function that we'd be more likely to see in economics. For those of you that have had intermediate micro, where you've had to differentiate a utility function, this will probably look sort of familiar. We'll have a utility function of x and y. We consume two goods. Good one is x, good two is y. We're going to have x to the power of alpha times y to the power of beta. All right, and what I want is the marginal utility of x. All right, well, what's the marginal utility of x? Well, the marginal utility of x is the first derivative of the utility function with respect to x. So, partial derivative of utility with respect to x, alpha becomes the leading coefficient times x to the, well, if I multiplied this guy by alpha, I've got to subtract 1 from the exponent, alpha minus 1. And then y is along for the ride. I'm not going to be consistent with how I do this. Marginal utility of y. So let's look at the marginal utility of y. Well, Fancy partial derivative notation. Partial derivative of u of x, y with respect to y. So I just go back up here, look, see what's going on. Well, this coefficient, or this exponent, becomes a leading coefficient. I get beta. Now this is with respect to y, so x is held constant. So x is just along for the ride. x to the alpha. Now we've got y to the beta, but I gotta subtract one from that exponent. So it's y to the beta minus one. So the marginal utility of x is alpha times x to the alpha minus 1 times y to the beta. Marginal utility of y is beta times x to the alpha times y to the beta minus 1. So let's see what we've got. Now, one of the rules that we need for differentiation with partial derivatives in economics is the chain rule. The chain rule is a pretty awesome rule. It's a little difficult at first, which is why I decided to have an entire section on it in this class. But let's say I've got this function z equals f of x and y. But x is a function of something, and y is also going to be a function of something. So this is a composition of functions. x is a function g of q and r y is a function h of s. But I want the derivative of z with respect to 
QR and S. Let's just kind of where we scratch our heads a little bit. Now like, God, what are we gonna do here? How does this happen? How did I end up here? What's the meaning of life? Well, take a look. So X is contained within the function F, but X itself is defined by a function G of Q and R. So if I want the derivative of Z with respect to Q, well, what I have to do is we sort of think about this like, like we're peeling like an onion. There's gonna be a lot of layers and we've gotta go through the layers to get down to where we want to stop. So if I want D, Z or del Z, del Q. Well, what I have to do is I first have to take the derivative of f with respect to x, like this. All right, but x is a function g of Q and R. All right, so if x is a function of q and r, then what I have to do is that right there. So I take the derivative of f with respect to x, and then I multiply it by the derivative of g with respect to q. All right, let's try it with r this time. Let's see what happens if we do it with respect to r. Well, what I want is this del z del r. I get that. So I take the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So this part and this part are exactly the same. But I'm multiplying these partials. These partials are the same. I'm multiplying these partials by different partials of g. This one's with respect to q. This one's with respect to r. So the way it goes, if you want to think about it, I'm going to draw a little arrow. This is sort of the path that it follows. Down, up, down. Same here. So we just sort of keep going, and we stop when we reach a function that has that variable that we want in it. So this is our stopping point. So let's do an example so we can see what's going on. Dropping shit. I don't care. Okay, so let's do an example here. Got a function u of c and z, and this is equal to c to the negative one half plus the natural log <coughs> excuse me, of z cubed. But c is equal to x squared plus y one third z is equal to x to the fourth plus y to two thirds. 
right? What I want is the partial of u with respect to x. So how do I make that one happen? Well, what I would have here, u of c and z, let me call it like, I don't know, f of cz, So u is a function of c and z, c is a function of function g of x, y, z is a function h of x, y. And I just need to figure out now what each piece is. Well, what I want is partial of u with respect to c, right? Because I want u with respect to x. C kind of gets in the way of that, right? Down, over and up, down. Well, C is getting in the way of this du dx, so I gotta take care of this C, right? So, I got that, but wait a minute, I also have Z to worry about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that. So in this case, well, chain rule says du, dc, dc, dx, but now I need to add du, dz times dz, dx. Probably sounds a little confusing, probably because it is. But let's go ahead and do it piece by piece, because if we can do it piece by piece, it's way easier. So let's get this du, dc. What does that equal to? Well, I take the partial derivative of this guy with respect to c. What is that? Well, it's going to be negative 1 half c to the negative 1 half minus 1. All right, well, what is negative 1 half minus 1? Well, c to the negative 3 over 2. What did you guys not go over? Really? Really? Did you have to not? Was that an appropriate thing to do? Really, guys? My cats are assholes. Anyways. Okay. One, negative one half times c to the negative three over two. So that takes care of this part right here. Now I need dc dx. Well, c is a function g of x and y. So what I got here is the derivative of this guy with respect to x is 2x. that. I take the partial of u with respect to c, 
negative 1 half c to the negative 3 over 2, and I multiply it by the partial of c with respect to x, 2x. All right, but now I need to figure out this du dz, because z is also a function of x. So I can't just stop. Once I get to c, I've also got to do z, because z has x in it as well. All right, well, what is the derivative of the natural log of z cubed? Well, 1 over z cubed, then what do I have to do? Well, multiply it by 3z squared. Chain rule stuff. Honestly, I don't even know why I put z cubed in here. I really have no clue. So I'll tell you what. We'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of this. And we'll start over. The partial of u with respect to z. Well, the partial of u with respect to z, the derivative of the natural log of z is just 1 over z. Fairly simple. Not too bad. All right, now we need this dz dx. What do I do with that? Well, I look at z and differentiate through z with respect to x. All right, which in this case is 4x cubed. Because I take this exponent, I make it a leading coefficient, I subtract 1 from the exponent. 4x cubed. All right, and then I just take these two guys and I multiply them together. 1 over z times 4x cubed. But remember, I've got to add this derivative and this derivative together. So I need du dc times dc dx. Notice du dc. What's in the denominator here, if we're doing the chain rule, is going to pop up in the numerator and the next derivative that we have to take. It always does. du dz dz dx. du dc dc dx. Right, but, so I have to add this and this together. So I just do negative 1 half. to the negative 3 over 2 times 2x plus 1 over z times 4x cubed. And this would be the partial derivative of u of c and z with respect to x. Now this is probably one of the more complicated math problems you will see in this class. This is hands down one of the most complicated math problems you'll see in this class. Come on, guys. Come on, Icy. You gotta get down. All right, everybody say hi to Isis. This is the wife of Osiris. You gotta think for black cats if you haven't noticed. Whoop. So admittedly, this is a particularly difficult math problem, but it's good to see even a tough example. Okay, so let's do another example with the chain rule. So it's going to be a nice, slightly easier example this time. What are we going to have? Well, let's say I've got a function z that's equal to x squared plus the natural log of y. And x is a function 
of v cubed plus 4 times u to the fourth power. And I want dz dv. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do here, while we're still learning the chain rule, is sort of draw out or write out what I want to have happen. Well, x is a function of v. So I need to take the derivative of z with respect to x, because then I need to take the derivative of x with respect to v in order to see how z changes with respect to a change in v. So how do I do that? Well, I do dz. Remember, I gotta go through x first. So x is like my first layer I have to go through to get to v. Hey, Osiris, he's crying outside. So I got dz dx multiplied by his del x del v. Right, so this is the second layer. So the I gotta peel back the first layer to get to the second layer to see what's going on with v. All right, so let's look at this del z del x business first. What is that? Well, it's the derivative of this with respect to x. So that's a really easy one, it's 2x. All right, y is a constant, so this could be x squared plus a natural log of y, it could be x squared plus two, x squared plus 10. It doesn't matter, it will differentiate to zero because there's no x going on here. There's no x being multiplied by this y. So what's happening is this y is changing totally independently of x. So if x is going this way and y is going this way, right, we're staring directly down the y-axis. So anything that happens along the y-axis doesn't matter. So y goes to zero. So del z del x is two times x. So let's look at del x del v. So the partial derivative of x with respect to v. Del x times del v. What's that equal to? Well, I just take the derivative of this guy straight across with respect to v. v only shows up once. It shows up right here. Its derivative is 3 times v squared, not cubed, squared. So 3v squared. And then according to this, I multiply them together. So I get 2x So I'm just going to rewrite this del z del x times del x del v, and that is equal to del z del x is 2x times del x del v, which is 3v squared. And that's what we would have. If you wanted to simplify it further, you could get 6 times xv squared. And that is the partial of z with respect to v. Let's do the partial of z with respect to u. How would I do that? Well, let's go ahead and write the formula out for it because that'll help us figure out how we need to do this. So to get from the derivative, or to get the derivative of z with respect to u, first I need to look at the derivative of z with respect to x again. So del z del x. All right, and then from x, I need to get the partial derivative of x with respect to v. So that will be del x del v. So let's look at del z del x. Well, we already had that here, it's this guy. Right, so this derivative is the same. It's just 2x. But now I need the derivative of x, but instead of with respect to v like what I got over here, I need it with respect to u. So what do I do there? Well, I take the derivative of 4u to the fourth. 16u cubed. And then if I look at this formula here, del z del x times del x del v, well, 2x is equal to del z del x. 16u cubed is del x del u. 
So, let me get 2x times 16u cubed. And then we can simplify that out if we would like. 32xu cubed. So when it comes to the chain rule for partial derivatives, if we've got all of our functions written out. We've got them all listed like this. First, we need to figure out what the chain of derivatives needs to be. Once we know what that is, we can take derivatives line by line and then just multiply them together. So it's really, it looks bizarre, it looks strange, I'll admit, but it's really not all that bad. Now with that said, um, I will end this lecture here. Um, the next thing we will start will be dynamical systems and fixed points. Um, I'll put a problem set for some calculus up. Um, depending on how difficult I might I make it, I might actually add some hints. And honestly, what I might do, I'm feeling kind of nice. I think I might put a problem set up, and then accidentally post the answer key to the problem set before the problem set's due. So be on the lookout. Uh, you might get a really nice, super early Christmas present. So until then, uh, thank you for weathering this lecture. We're now done with the calculus, well, learning the calculus. We'll be using quite a bit of calculus later on in the course. Um, the next thing we'll do is just looking at dynamics. That'll be a very short chapter, and then it's directly into economic modeling. So we are making some headway in the course, and I look forward to you watching my videos, I guess, because I guess I can't see you. Thanks, COVID. Um, have a great day. Peace.